Hi, let's solve move zeros. It reads, given an array, nums, write a function to move all zeros to the end of it while maintaining the relative order of the non-zero elements. So we're given the input area and we have to segregate the zeros and non-zeros in such a way that the non-zeros are in the order that they were in the input. So 1, 3, 12 are seen in the input and we, we line up the non-zeros in that same order and then we have the zeros thereafter. So really we're putting the zeros at the end of the area and all the non-zeros are in the order that they were given in the beginning. Now, now this area transformation we're told to do in place. What that means is without using another area to copy the non-zeros and then zeros. And we're also told to do this in minimal number of steps. Now this is a relevant tech interview question. Companies such as Facebook, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, Yandex, and Capital One and many others ask this question. This qu question falls under the broader category of area transformation. The, rela the related topics of this question are arrays and two pointers. So I have a brute force and optimal solution. So let's get to it. Okay, so I'm going to be showing brute force and optimized solution. So let's explain, um, let me explain the first approach. So it's good to offer a brute force approach just so that um, your thinking can be reflected to an interviewer. And it's because um, it would seem very rehearsed or even memorized if you just show a flawless approach to begin with. So for that sake, I think it's worth its while to sort of go over the brute force approach. So basically, we're going to traverse the array twice, one for putting the non-zeros into the new array, which I have called NZ array, which is of the same size of my input array. So if my input array is 5, this NZ array will also have the same length or size of the array, which is 5. So the first for loop traverses for the purpose of finding non-zeros and inserting them into the new area, which is the NZ area at J index. So the J index is the index for considering only non-zero elements. So every time I see a non-zero element in my area, I place that new uh, that non-zero element and my new Z area at the J index. And every time I see that again, I put it in the next available uh, J. Uh, and the area of J. And once I do this till the end of the area, what I do is traverse another time, but not from zero. We traverse the area from where J was. And then we fill in the remaining um, slots in our area with zeros. So if I had three non zeros in my area, and um, the other two of those would be zeros. So I would append the area such that in the remaining two uh, slots at the end, I would add zeros. And then we return the array. So let's quickly uh, draw out how this can be visualized. So let's take the area here that I have here, uh, num, which is the elements here. And below that, I have the index of those. So at index zero, and the starting off uh, J is also at index 0, as can be seen here. J is 0 and I is 0. So when I equals to 0, we see the element 0. And our for loop does not provide a case for considering zeros because we're only interested in non-zeros. So what do we do? Just move on to the next element. Don't do anything about the 0 for now. So the next element is 1 at index 1. So when I equals to 1, J, <laughs> so so what happens is J would be incremented to 1, but after inserting the um, element 1 in the new array. So this is my NZ array. At index 0 of NZ array, I have the first non-zero element, which is 1. So now, after inserting the 1 in the new array, J would be incremented from 0 to 1. Now we move on to I equals to 2. At index 2, we see the number 3. Because 3 does not equal to 0, what we do is place that 3 in our NZ array at the next uh, J index, which is the index 1. So previously, J was incremented to 1 from 0. Now J will be incremented to 2 from 1, because 
Every time we see a non-zero and we insert that non-zero element into the NZ array, we increment j. Okay, so now we're at i equals to 3. When i equals to 3, we see a uh, element that is 0. So we don't do anything, and j still remains s2 because we have not seen a non-zero element. Okay, so now when i equals to 4, we do see a non-zero element, that is 5. 5 does not equal to 0, so nums of um, i, which is the element 5, that gets inserted to the nz area at index 2. So the value of j previously was 2, now j will be incremented to 3 from 2. So that's the uh, visualization of the first traversal. And because we had created the area with the fixed size of 5 as our input is 5, what would happen to the next two slots is basically they're going to be null. So null and null for the last two slots. What we're going to do is append the array from where j is. So, so in the next loop, what happens is the index i equals to j. What that means is we want to append the array from where j left off. So j left off at the index 2, and after inserting that last element at index 2, we incremented j from 2 to 3. So that's where we start the second traversal. So j equals to 3, so i also equals to 3. So at index 3, what do we see in our new nz array? We see null value. And what are we doing in the second for loop? Well, we're going to be appending. We're going to be adding 0. So what happens is um, the array from the first iteration will be intact. It will be the way it was with the three values. But now the nulls, what we do is simply place them with zeros. So when i equals to j, which is 3, at index 3, we see null. Right, the zero index here, one, two, and then three and four. So at index three and four, we see null values. So at index three, we place the null value with zero, and when i equals to four, we do the same, add zero. And there you have it, that's the array transformation with non-zeros and zeros segregated. So really, th th this idea unfolds in the next solution too, but it does so without using that spare array. Okay, so we're done with the brute force, and uh, th the first approach is the brute force here on the left, and the second approach I'm going to be demonstrating here on the right side of my screen. Uh, that's where the number two is. And uh, basically, the second approach uses two pointers idea. So the two pointers are really the first pointer is our standard um, iteration that is in the for loop. The i is my first pointer. It's going to be reading each element one at a time. And the second, powder, uh, second pointer is the nz count. It's going to be only um, pointing to elements that are non-zero. And um, let's walk through this because this is so similar to the first one. I just want to get to the code walkthrough immediately. So when i equals to 0, right, the index 0 in our input example, we're using the same input example. When i equals to 0, nz is also 0. Starting off, i is 0 and nz count to 0 as well. So what happens? We see a 0 element. So when we see 0, we don't have any condition accounted for that. So what do we do? We don't do anything. We want to the next element. So when i equals to 1, we see the element, which is a non-zero. So when we see a non-zero, what do we do? <coughs> so unlike the first approach, which would push it into the new array, we don't have a spare array that we're using. So what we're doing is modifying our given array, which is nums. So what we do is, uh, so I have two brackets drawn here, consider it my nums array. So what I'm going to do is push that element, the um, element 1 at index 0. So that's the first transformation, right? At, the element 1 was at index 1 in the example input array. Now it's at index 0. And that's the code for that, right? Nums of i, the current element, is now pushed to the nums of nz count, which is 0. So at index 0, we see the element 1. After pushing that element at index 1, at index 0, we increment the nz count from 0 to 1. Okay, moving on, i equals to 2. At index 2, we see a non-zero element, which is 3. 
So we've again pushed that non-zero element in the nums array at, the, at a different index, right? At index one. So the three was at index two. Now um, we've modified it so that it is at the next index following the first index. So it, it is at index one. Okay. Once we're done with that, we increment nz from one to two. Okay. Now i equals to three, we see another non-zero, uh, zero element, so we don't do anything, and nz is still two. Now i equals to four. When i equals to four, we see a non-zero element that is five, so we push it into our nums of nz count, right? So, which is at index two, right? If I were to write out the index, we zero, one, two. And index two, we push our last non-zero element, and we're at the end of our area iteration for the first loop, right? So again, the next two values, what would they be? Well, they would be, unlike the first problem, it wouldn't be null, because that was a spare area and it had a fixed size to begin with. Um, there was null. Here it would just be 0 and 5. And that's not what we expect as output, right? The 0 and 5 has to be appended so they reflect zeros because in the original area we're given five digits three of those we accounted for here one three five the remaining two we didn't take care of are the two zeros so because the array because we changed the index we did not rewrite so because I moved the five from index four to index two that doesn't automatically delete my uh, five at the end of the area at index four it has to be changed and how we do so is using a second loop which starts off where the um, nz count left off and by the way after in inserting the 5 here in index 2 we have to increment the count of uh, nz from 2 to 3 okay so i would be 3 right which is the index here uh, this would be 3 index 3 and this would be index 4 so when i equals to 3 nz also equals to 3 so what we do is append the array from that place that is the two remaining spots in our area the index three and four right we have to append it such that each of those uh, nums of i so nums of i is now at index three we have to add a zero to the area so now the appending would look like this you would have a one three five and then a zero and then uh, when i equals to four which i'll just have here when i equals to 4 we're also going to add a 0 and that's our area transformation so i started where the nz count left off at 3 and then each each at each i which started off with the index 3 we added a 0 so we had a 0 and 5 here now it's correct order 1 3 5 0 0 and then we return nums. In the original problem, we don't have to return nums, but just to just so you may be able to output, I added that. So that's all that is. Um, like I said, both approaches does the same goal, that is transforming the array, but one does it without using a spare array, that it modifies the input array and uh, make the transformation, but the other one uses a spare array to do the same thing. So that's all there really is to it. So I, I hope it was um, comprehensible. Let's run this on lead code. Okay, I'm going to be submitting this and it's the exact uh, approach that I showed, which is the in-place approach, the second approach. Um, let's submit it. And there you have it. <coughs> so should you have any questions or improvements, uh, optimization ideas, leave them down below and please subscribe. I really work hard to fill that space of um, lack of JavaScript content, um, problem solving and interview related content. So thank you for watching and should you have um, any ideas for me, please communicate to the channel as it's trying uh, to best cater to your needs. Thank you.